Hello, friends and neighbors. This is Pastor Stephen Wall coming to you again from St. John St. Peter Lutheran Church in Cleveland, Wisconsin. Join with me as we dive into God's Word for comfort, assurance, and guidance for our lives as Christians living in the shadow of the cross. This coming Sunday, I'll be preaching on the Old Testament lesson from Ezekiel. And so I want to give you a little bit of a primer for our theme for this coming Sunday, the focus of our readings. Uh, The focus is really on God calling us to repent, calling uh, the wicked to recognize, to see their wicked ways and turn away from them. That's what repentance is, a turning away. Uh, And there, there are facets to that turning away, right? There is the contrition, which is the sorrow over sin, when we recognize that the things that we have been doing are wickedness in God's sight, evil. If they are against God's will, then they are wicked in his sight. They are sins. And so uh, the contrition is sorrow over our sins because we realize that we are guilty and that we have deserved God's punishment. But repentance goes beyond just that sorrow over sin. There's a turning, a turning away from the sin, turning to God in trust for his forgiveness, trusting in him that he is our savior who takes away our sin and our guilt. And with that turning to God, we, our hearts turn as well away from the sinful desires. And in fact, God gives to us a new nature, a new heart, the Bible talks about, that desires what is righteous in God's sight. It desires what is good. It desires to do the will of God. And so within every Christian is this battle between the sinful nature And that new heart, that new creation God has made us to be. As we pick up in our gospel for this week, as I said, the emphasis is on repentance. And that with repentance comes that that turning away from the wickedness and doing then the will of God. Of course, that's only possible by the power of the Holy Spirit working in our hearts. But Jesus, in Matthew chapter 21, he's nearing the end of his ministry. He's uh, being confronted by the chief priests, the elders who, who don't like this rabbi from Nazareth. Jesus is dealing with those chief priests, those elders. Uh, these are the ones who knew God's Word probably better than anybody, but many of them rejected Jesus. They didn't recognize that Jesus was the Son of God, the promised Messiah. So uh, in, our, in our gospel reading for this Sunday, we get uh, Jesus being questioned about his authority. And then Jesus turns things around on those chief priests and the elders. Listen to what he says. Uh, Matthew 21, verse 23 and following. When Jesus went into the temple courts, the chief priests and the elders of the people came to him while he was teaching and said, by what authority are you doing these things? And who gave you this authority? Jesus answered them, I will also ask you one question. If you answer it, I will tell you by what authority I do these things. The baptism of John, where was it from? From heaven or from men? They discussed it among themselves, saying, If we say from heaven, he will say to us, then why did you not believe him? But if we say from men, we are afraid of the crowd, since they all regard John as a prophet. So they answered Jesus, we do not know. He said to them, then I will not tell you by what authority I do these things. They were choosing to ignore the truth of who Jesus was and the authority. They had all the evidence in the world that Jesus was the son of God, is the son of God by the miracles that he performed. 
but they ignored them. So Jesus goes on. And this is the part where we really, we really see Jesus uh, talking about repentance and what repentance is. He says, what do you think? A man had two sons. He went to the first and said, son, go work today in my vineyard. He answered, I will not. But later he changed his mind and went. He came to the second and said the same thing. The second son answered, I will go, sir. But he did not go. Which of the two did the will of his father? They said to him, the first. Jesus said to them, Amen, I tell you, the tax collectors and the prostitutes are entering the kingdom of God ahead of you, for John came to you in the way of righteousness, but you did not believe him. However, the tax collectors and prostitutes did believe him. Even when you saw this, you did not change your mind and believe him. You know, Jesus also said in the Gospel of John, the work of God is this, to believe in the one whom he sent. That's to believe in Jesus. And really, it's no work at all. It's simply trusting in the work that Jesus did for us. And that was where the elders and the chief priests were really stumbling. They knew God's word, and, and uh, many of them tried to apply it to their lives and live by it. But they were falling short in the most important thing of all. They didn't trust in Jesus. They didn't see Jesus as their savior from sin. In fact, they had convinced themselves that they didn't need a savior, that they were doing a good enough job of keeping God's commands, that they didn't really need a savior. And so they couldn't recognize their sin. They ignored it and turned against Jesus. It's important to remember that our salvation is from God. And when he calls us to repentance, we want to follow the path of righteousness that he lays out for us in his word. Now, we may have all kinds of sins in our past, but those sins are paid for in Jesus Christ. Our guilt is removed by him so that every day is a new day when we can commit ourselves to him, to doing his will, uh, to trusting him in him in all things and going about his work, turning away from the wickedness of, of adultery, the wickedness of, of lust, the wickedness of uh, pride, the wickedness of anger and hatred, the wickedness of um, jealousy or of greed. All of these things, God calls us to repent and turn away from them in humility, recognizing our sin and our need for a Savior and trusting in Jesus and then applying ourselves by the grace of God to live according to his will. You know, John Newton, the, the man who, a former slave trader who came to uh, recognize, to know Jesus as his Savior, to believe in Jesus, he's the one who wrote Amazing grace, how sweet the sound. But he has a really interesting quote. He says, I am not what I ought to be. I am not what I want to be. I am not what I hope to be in another world. But still, I am not what I once used to be. And by the grace of God, I am what I am. In other words, he recognized he wasn't all the way there yet. God had a lot of work to do on him yet. But he also recognized that he had been given new life in Jesus Christ. He wasn't what he used to be. He was a new creation. And he desired to do the will of God. Brothers and sisters, you too desire to do God's will to follow his righteousness and not your own, trusting in him for full and free forgiveness and for strength for each day. In Jesus' name, amen.
The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Take my life and let it be consecrated, Lord, to thee. Take my moments and my days, let them flow in ceaseless praise. Take my hands and let them move at the impulse of thy love. Take my feet and let them be swift and beautiful for thee. Take my voice and let me sing always only for my King. Take my lips and let them be filled with messages from Thee. Take my silver and my gold, not a might would I withhold. Take my intellect and use every power as thou shalt choose. 